You're with Julian on the brown note and a review of another round. Uh, well, <laughs> a late comer to this one as it was uh, nominated and won best, what used to be called best foreign language film at the Oscars, but I think it's called best international feature, which threw up an interesting paradigm. Minari was also in the same category and they said, but Minari is an American film. It is really. So it's ironic that... <laughs> I think a year or a year or two after they dropped the best foreign language category and replaced it with best international feature that Minari ends up in best international feature alongside this. Um, he's directed since the 90s, The Celebration, Submarino, the English language film with Kerry Mulligan, which is apparently very good, but I've not seen Far From the Matting Crowd, the classic book. But it's the 2020, 2012 film The Hunt, which um, really celebrates him the most. It's where he joined together with Mads Mikkelsen, the star here, and it's a brilliant film. I watched a lot of Danish cinema around that period, and it was all great. They did so many really good films, and I've just I've dropped off my foreign language films a bit, and I feel quite bad about that. It was a film where Mads Mikkelsen returned to the small town he grew up in as a primary school teacher. Lovely guy good group of friends and the seven-year-old girl in his class who's got a very bad home life falls in love with him mistakenly says that he tried to kiss her because that's what she wants and she's seven years old and has no idea what's going on the rest of the film was the adults pressuring her into basically inventing this entire story of abuse and the entire town turning on him a, arguably the career peak of Mads Mikkelsen as an actor, an incredible... He's such a good actor because he can do that incredibly good Bond villain that he did in Casino Royale um, and do that very sort of sternness. But he's such a soulful person as well that he can do very quiet emotion, something that Northern Europeans know all about. Quiet desperation is the English way. Um, he's got back together with Mads Mikkelsen for another round and the success of that has been the most prominent he's had the other members of the cast and it is a four-hander it isn't a Mads Mikkelsen film per se he's undoubtedly the lead character in the hunt he was on his own as the lead character and everyone orbited him here it's about four friends Mads as Martin Thomas Bo Larson Lars Arantze and Magnus Millang most of those people will be immediately obvious to a lot of film goers you'll recognize their faces you won't know where you've seen them but you do know who they are the setup for this is wonderful they're all teachers and they all teach um borderline college age kids in this same school one's a pe teacher uh, and they've been friends since childhood the film opens and it's a painfully brilliant performance by mads mickelson in the opening 30 minutes of this film as a guy that has withdrawn from life his wife can't stand him anymore and just talks quickly and loudly whenever she's in the room just so she doesn't have to spend too much time he is obviously suffering from very deep depression he has completely withdrawn into himself his confidence is zero he has zero self-confidence and he knows that everything has gone from his life it's really quite heartbreaking the children he teaches, probably like in their late teens, feel the same. And in a really painful moment, which I think leads to how people like Danish people and Dutch people and Swedish people can actually do things like this, the kids hold an intervention uh, with the parents to say how bad a teacher he is. And that's quite painful to watch. Um, and then one of his friends says, like, he won't drink either. But they have a celebratory birthday dinner and finally he has a glass of what a vodka and then a glass of wine and then it all comes out and he starts crying and it's the first time we see shoots of life touch this man. And one of his friends comes up with this idea, there's a philosopher or something like a philosopher that speculates the human body should have 0.05 blood alcohol limit and we have zero as standard. And he believed that we should have a 0.05. That's our, our natural state. At that state, we become our best selves. And 
below that state, we are more miserable and less effective in dealing with each other and less proficient in our endeavours. And that's a drink driver limit. So they so they start this trial where academically and mentally, because of their own personal situations not being great, they decide to maintain that blood alcohol level all day and to focus on what Ernest Hemingway did, which was to switch off at eight o'clock at night and just maintain all day at school teaching these kids. It's not the most responsible film. Does art have a responsibility to be responsible? I think art has a responsibility to the human spirit, and that's it. So they start teaching their kids, and he's immediately a changed human being. He's suddenly charismatic. He's got a bit more confidence. And the kids react to it, and and it keeps going backwards and forwards between him. He's able to talk to his wife. Um, Who's she? She's really good, and she's the next biggest character, uh, Maria Bonavi as Annika. Uh, and she's really good in the film as well as his wife, who who just tries to avoid him. But he suddenly becomes more and more charismatic as the film goes on. Given the the impact on all their lives is actually really good by this stage, they attempt to widen the process by upping the blood alcohol level incrementally with these breath testers all the way through. So they go up to 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7. I think they start tapping out at 013 somewhere around three times the drink drive limit <laughs> smashed now this is a really interesting film i can understand on some ways why people might not regard it as a masterpiece uh if certain air areas aren't as developed as they are but it does a lot of things that you don't normally get for one thing it's a really funny film it is a drama comedy rather than a comedy but it is still often hilarious and the tone is often hilarious but it's also a really good drama as well because we get really dark, in deep dark passages about their personal lives and who they are as people. But the thing that really took off for me here was it's, it's the human spirit. It is so in touch with the human spirit. It is quite rare nowadays to see a film that will focus on men of a certain age going through a midlife crisis. I know midlife crisis have been overdone in films. But not quite in the way that this one's done. Mainly they're like, you know, men that are bored. These people are, are, like Mads Mikkelsen character, has been erased from the earth. He's got nothing left and he's in agony. He he really is in pain. Uh, And it's about reconnecting with who you were when you were 20. And when you had confidence and dreams. and, And when you were a dynamic, interesting person that people wanted to listen to. Um. And I really love the way that it, it, it did engage with um, the human spirit in such uh, an often uplifting way. And it didn't shy away from darkness. It didn't shy away from a suicide. Um, most of it, it also didn't rely on the Western world punishment angle in movies, which is where someone that does a bad thing gets punished ultimately for it, which is why I love Ferris Bueller. It's one of the only films where someone does relentlessly bad things and gets away with all of it most of the time they get punished and i kept waiting for them not remembering it was a european film to where their comeuppance is for their drinking and they really don't bad things happen to them but most of the worst things that happened to them would have happened anyway and in mads mickelson's case it's arguable that it would have been much more prolonged the bad that happened to him and that he might have solved it by drinking so even they even give this one of the students they even get one of the students to start partaking in this uh philosophy of life um the drinking stuff is hysterically funny they go so far overboard you are sure that they are going to come a cropper but with the skill of a mountain goat they manage to sort of dance through towards the end in a better shape and this film is full of little triumphs and arousing moments that make you feel full of life it makes you feel like these people have been pigeonholed into this non-existence and are suddenly alive again and suddenly able to interact with other human beings and feel life. All of it, even the bad, actually feel things again. Um, And there are triumphs all the way through. Um, Mads Mikkelsen is magnificent. Um, I've rarely seen him uh, in a film where I haven't said that he was brilliant. 
if he was really focused on him a lot more, maybe it would have been an, uh, he would have got nominated for an Oscar as well. I don't think it would have been a far stretch if he had, but it isn't that kind of film. It's not really punishing, and um, it's it aims for equal comedy as well as drama, and that's it rarely gets that much in the way of Oscars anyway. But he got a couple of nominations and won one. So this is a really good film, and I can see why some people sort of put it in the seven out of ten category a bit but there is there's so much here that's philosophically interesting um the about the connection we have with with life and being dynamic and charismatic and entertaining and engaging and how we get what you give with other people and about how that feeds you and how about how getting older we close ourselves off and become these very conservative almost humans so the final 10 minutes is some of the most euphoric you'll ever see. You've probably seen the clips of them dancing. Um, so it ends on absolutely the most triumphant moment, um, probably the most fun dancing moment since Call Me By Your Name. And I left feeling a lot about life, uh, feeling quite euphoric, feeling like I'd had an awful lot of fun, yet I'd also enriched myself watching it. So I am going to give it a very strong 9 out of 10 for another round. This is from last week's feature album by the Dropkick Murphys, uh, which is a wonderful, wonderful...